All right, Shalom. Call law, all praises, glory and honor unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahushai. I want to touch on this topic dealing with lust, okay, because <clears throat> lust for lies, lust of the flesh, and, you know, something that we have to address because, <coughs> excuse me, we, we as a nation, you know what I'm saying, the reason why we're going off, you know what I'm saying, the reason why we are in the captivity and state that we're in is because we broke the law, statutes, and commandments. In one of the commandments, not only dealing, I mean, first and foremost, idolatry, you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying, and whoring after other gods. But one thing that we also have done is have we have been an adulterous, wicked generation, you know, it's like your know, adulterous, wicked um, nation, all right? So, and one of the things that we have we have done and we've allowed to seep into our communities and as well as dealing with Hebrew Israelites as well we have allowed you know certain things to seep into our minds and thinking certain lusts you certain lusts that we've had since we've been in the world is okay like ie you know what I'm saying doing what the Greeks did and what was that and doing what the Romans did what was that taking images and lusting and you know lusting after it you know what I'm saying, of a woman or whatever. You know what I'm saying, and lusting after that image of a woman that has um, that has a husband. You know what I'm saying? Now, in the current captivity that we're in, in the current um, uh, empire that we're under, which is the uh, re reincarnated Roman Empire, which is America, which is Babylon the Great, which is the virgin daughter of Babylon, which is America, and its philosophy and influence that is spread throughout the four corners. It um, th this particular captivity that we're in, we're exposed to uh, to idolatry, as well as adultery on a high level. You know, some to to the point where you know most of us won't admit. Now, the thing is, as men of the Lord, as men that have been ordained by the Heavenly Father to teach this word and to preach and prophesy and break down this word for the brothers and sisters to hear we have to be we have to set the example we have to show and, and guide our lives and, our, and guide the way for our people so that you know our people can know look this is how you do it this is how you this is the life to live we don't live like this we don't live like animals craving sex or craving lust in general like a rabid ass dog Excuse my language, but a rabbit, like a rabbit dog, you know what I'm saying? Like Cujo or something like that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like the other, like the Gentiles do, like the so-called white men who is, who are the Edomites, the biblical name or their names in the ancient Hebrew is, is uh, Adawan, Esau, the Ishmaelites, the so-called Arabs, you know what I'm saying? Moab and Ammon, the uh, so-called Chinese, so-called Japanese. We're not like these... These particular Gentile nations are not. We we do not conduct ourselves like that. We have the law, statutes, and the commandments. And the and the reason why we act just like them in some in in certain ways worse is because we have strayed away from the law, statutes, and commandments. So, with that said, um, we're just going to read uh, me in this video right here. I'm going to read scriptures and Bible verses dealing with lust and understanding that we're not. We have to control ourselves we have the spirit we can pray to the most high to get us off we get us get us off all kinds of different forms of um worldliness off of us whether it be physical spiritually or physically spiritually or mentally you know what i'm saying he can get that burden that vexation off of you or that craving or that lust so we have to do the so if we can we pray if the lord can get us off of Eating pork, shrimp, crab, lobsters, smoking weed, smoking cigarettes, um, doing all kinds of wicked things. And guess what? We can tell him to get this lustful spirit off of us. Like, you know what I'm saying? Looking at an image and just lusting after that particular woman. You know what I'm saying? And the thing is, and before I get the scriptures, you got to understand, if you dealt with spirits and have rebuked spirits, even prior to being in this truth, like like me myself, I have extensive uh, um, dealings with spirits. 
you know what I'm saying that that have like certain things in terms of you not you have to do this particular thing or you know what I'm saying something like that you can fight it off through you can still fight it off especially when you're in the spirit now you know what I'm saying you're in the spirit and holy and you have the holy spirit on you and you have the heavenly father on your side you can get it off of you man so with that said let's go ahead and get you know what I'm saying cuz you know brothers and sisters can't have can't have an excuse now I'm primarily dealing with the men but this is applies to the women too you know what I'm saying the laws apply to the man and woman but the man has to be the has to be the one to lead the charge okay that's where the men of the lord come in okay so with that said let me get colossians real quick we're going to go into some basic scriptures basic fundamental scriptures to um give you an understanding that we got to control ourselves and we have the power and ability to do so no excuses this is the book of colossians chapter 3 verse 5 mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth okay and the members you can go look it up in the in the uh, strongest of coordinates it's not talking about any old kind of members it's talking about your physical members your flesh it's talking about primarily you know what i'm saying your 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 uh, genital area in particular all right because that's where when you deal with lust there's it's desires which can be many multitude of different things because dealing with the word in the old testament but of certain lusts because like like uh, there's a particular scriptures saying <coughs> after you paid your tithes or whatever you, whatever you, your heart lusteth after or desireth you can you can uh do whatever you choose you do whatever you can do whatever you uh choose to do as long as it's according to the law but lusting after the flesh in terms of just wanting it to the point of committing sin is going off so i'm gonna read this again colossians 3 and 5 mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth fornication sexual immorality of all forms all right uncleanliness all right inordinate affections which is homosexuality homosexuality uh different yeah pretty much homosexuality evil conspicuances and covetousness which is adultery so those are those are uh things you know what i'm saying also too that you'll lust after you know what i'm saying dealing with your body dealing with your mind man because everything starts up here everything starts up with the lie which is the heart which is the mind everything starts with a thought you know let me get another scripture and i'm gonna go to the scripture that our lord and savior yahweh shah mashiach spoke of dealing with that particular issue so let's go ahead again proverbs uh 25 and 28 all right, this is the book of uh, Proverbs, chapter 25, <coughs> verse 28. All right. So it says, Proverbs, chapter 25, verse 28. He that have no rule over his own spirit. All right. So you're not controlling your spirit, controlling your body, controlling your temple, which is your vessel that the Lord gave you. He that rule, he he that have no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls so what does that mean you have no defense against against the uh, fiery darts of the wicked L in in particular dealing with your lust you know what i'm saying and this can you know controlling your own spirit is controlling your vessel controlling your anger controlling every aspect to you you know what i'm saying your emotions whether it be sexual, whether it be fit, whether it be anger, love, hatred, you know what I'm saying? You you're like a city with that that is broken down with no walls. That means anything can come in and enter in and and uh, violate you, molest you in in that way. And, and the word molest means to take to uh, touch you, okay? Or um, someone can or you're. Or you can be violated, or you, or all kinds of demons can come at you, you know, in all sorts of ways. Can come at you in every which direction. You don't have that spiritual defense against you. So what that begins to, uh, um, what begins to unfold upon you, is you becoming a reprobated mind. You're susceptible to anything. Now, with that said, let me get Galatians the sixth chapter. All right. Okay, so we're going to get, get some scriptures to give you brothers and sisters that are watching out there edification. 
all right so with that said let's get Galatians 6 and uh, 5 You know what I'm saying? Because we gotta, we gotta mortify our members. We gotta control and rule our spirit, man. We're grown men. You know we have to uh, understand that. Oh, it's Ephesians slack here, but <coughs> we have to understand that. You know we're held accountable now that we're in the truth. So when these scriptures come out and and we evaluate how we are, we have to um, take note and we have to make amends and make adjustments. You know what I'm saying? And rectify our ourselves, man. That's what we got to do. So with that said, let's get Ephesians uh, the sixth chapter. All right. So that just adding on to the point of what what it says about the broken wall, uh, someone that can't uh, pursuing the Proverbs 25, 28, where it says that uh, someone that can't rule his own spirit is, is like a fence that's broken down, a wall that's broken down. All right. So. You have to have put on this type of armor spiritually to keep yourself protected. All right. So with that said, and this all ties in because we have to have faith. You having this faith in the most high that can that can get can uh, get you off all kinds of infirmities, plagues, whatever, what have you. Ephesians 6 and 6 and 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. All right, so the shield of faith. The faith is is like a a faith is defense, man. You having faith in the heavenly Father will give you the defense against Satan, the temptations of, of the flesh and of Satan. That's why me personally, whenever I pray, I pray the Lord give me the strength to resist the temptation of the flesh, whether it be lust, whether it be any kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? Whether it be motions and whatnot, and resist the temptations of Satan. Satan comes in all angles, man. And when you can't rule your own spirit, you can't mortify that those members. All kinds of fiery darts come at you, man. You know what I'm saying? All kinds of fiery darts come up, come through them balls. You know what I'm saying? Come through them uh, them fence cities that are that this cities that it's like like it says it's a city with no defense. Those fiery darts come and, and take you by, by a storm. Metaphorically speaking, spirits will come at you and will plague the hell out of you. All right? Let's read that again. That's why this faith has to come in. You have to have faith in the Lord. He can do this for you. You know what I'm saying? Because less, less than after women and to the point where you're, you're just going up buying magazines and just, you know, you know what men do. You know what I'm saying? And lusting to the point where you're you're going to, uh, you know, uh, you know, have you know, saying you know, have sex, and look at looking at an image of a woman that's already married, you're going off, you know what I'm saying, and that opens up doors, gateways, depending on what magazine, what site you're on, you know what I'm saying, to for demons to jump on you, spirits to jump on you, man. That's a, you know what I'm saying. You're making yourself unclean. You know what I'm saying? By doing an act that's unlawful, lusting after a woman that's not, that's married, and all these demons are going to jump on you. And, and dealing with sex, there's all kinds of sexual um, perverted spirits out there that's going to jump on you, that's going to give you a, a what they call a fetish, man. So we're, I'm getting, now in these two verses, I'm going deep into it because those are the fiery darts of the wicked and those unfenced cities of that man that can't rule his own flesh and spirit they, they, that will come up, come upon them. So let me read that again. Ephesians 6 and 16. Above all, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And in faith in the Heavenly Father that he will take that lust and remove that lust off of your spirit and put that, uh, that spiritual defense upon you. You know what I'm saying? You, you will quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. You'd be like, okay, so when that lust of the flesh, when that temptation comes, you'd be like, bam. Uh, you know, I'll be, you know, you'll rebuke Satan and be like, Aka la shatan, which is rebuke, rebuke unto you or rebuke, you, rebuke to Satan, in other words. All right? Ba shima mashiach yal shai. 
all right? And and you keep saying that over and over again, or you just keep saying, no, I'm, I'm a, uh, no I'll praise, I'm going to do what the Most High wants me to do. I resist this in the name of, of Yahweh Shah Mashiach. You know what I'm saying? That's having faith in the Heavenly Father, man, that he'll quench those things away from, you know what I'm saying? He'll quench them fiery darts, them, them wicked spirits off of you, man. You know what I'm saying? Of, of lust. Now, let's not get it twisted. When, you know, obviously you desire a woman and whatnot. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with liking a woman and how she looks. A man was, woman was created for the man. The man was created for the woman. For, for, lust, for lustful desires. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm going to go into that part real quick. You know what I'm saying? Just dealing with that so we can have an understanding. Because... Someone of a Christian mindset will be like, oh, well, you can't look at a woman, period. Oh, you can't lust after a woman, you, you know, or desire her for her of, her, of her looks, period. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong with that desiring a woman for her, you know, because she looks good, right? But she has to not be married, you know what I'm saying? You have to spiritually be have your mind in tune with the laws and not allow all this lust of the this fleshly carnal body that is that will go off that will sin to overtake you. You have to keep them. You got to meditate on these laws day and night. That's your defense, man. You know what I'm saying? That fear. All right. All right. Now with that said, let me go ahead and get Matthew the fifth chapter in the. Uh, it's a lot. A 28 verse. All right. So, with that said, let me get. I think I got another precept too, just to hold, pull, pull this out real quick with it. Um. So let's <coughs> let's go ahead and deal, deal with this, right? Matthew chapter 5 verse 28 but I say unto you that whosoever looketh on, looketh on a woman to lust after her have committed adultery with her already in his heart now key word right like I said there's nothing wrong with liking a woman and desiring her for you know what I'm saying for what she is you know what I'm saying man was created for woman was created for the man man was created for a woman remember that the key point that Yahweh Shai said in this verse, because it's in red letters, Yahweh Shai is speaking in Matthew 5 and 28. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh, the, looketh on a woman to lust after her, all right, hath committed adultery. Adultery is like in a, a woman that is not, that is married or betrothed to another man. Based in these times that we're living in now, a woman that's already with the man. If she already got with a man, then, you know what I'm saying, you want to desire and lust after her, that's committing adultery in your heart. You're not committing a physical act, but you might as well be doing it because you already committed it in your heart. You have already committed adultery in your heart already. And it says, but I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman, a woman that's already married or betrothed, to lust after her, have committed adultery with her in his heart in his mind that thought that thought process in your mind has already committed that adultery man now obviously in the times that we live in now we're living in a sexualized over sexualized country world and that vibration is pushed out you know you see these women it's crazy because you see you know young teenagers in a, and it disgusts me every time i look it's where they have the slit jeans showing, you know, their thighs and whatnot. And you'd be thinking that aren't, aren't uh, grown, grown women, you know what I'm saying, should only supposed to be doing that? You know what I'm saying? Back in the 90s, okay, it was a roll of sleeves to the thighs, you know what I'm saying? But now, in this time, you know, you got women wearing booty shorts and slit jeans showing their th all, all manners of flesh of their thighs and whatnot. As young as 14, I, I've seen 12-year-olds, man. And I'm like, man, this this society is really wicked, man. And this, this is why the Lord got to destroy America. This is, why, this is how you know this is Babylon the Great. You know what I'm saying? And that influence of Babylon has been pushed out through the four corners. So, make a long story short, we, uh, we un it's understandable that 
of course, we as men, we're going to look at that. But as men of the Lord, as men in the truth, as Hebrew Israelites, not niggas, not thinking like a nigga, like, like my man uh, Sergeant Waters said off the soldier story to uh, my man Wookie in that, vid in that movie, stop thinking like a nigga and think like an Israel Israelite, man. You can't you can't use that excuse, man. You got to be strong. You know what I'm saying? Regardless of this type the type of things that go on. You know what I'm saying? Brothers fall, they got to get back up. But at the end of the day, we got to re resist this wicked temptation of the flesh and of what's going on in this world. So, to give you the precept on that, Mark 7 and 21. For from within, out of the heart of men, out of the mind, the lob Proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lavish, lasciviousness, and evil eye, blasphemy, pride, and foolishness. All these things come from within and defile the man. Now I want to key, key in on the main one, adultery, covetousness, all right? You know what I'm saying? Lasciviousness, lusting, you know what I'm saying? Desiring something to the point of doing anything for it or your mind and your bodies, your members being bound to that. You understand? So that comes out the mind. You have to, you have, to have a pure mind. You have to keep your minds, uh, meditate on the laws, statutes, and commandments. Okay? Now with that, let's go ahead and get... <coughs> Salaki, let me go ahead and get... Uh... You know what, let's get Psalms, uh, the first chapter, first verse, you know what I'm saying? Psalms 1 and 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. You know, people that are ungodly do all kinds of wicked things in, in this topic, being adulterers, committing uh, fornication, homosexual acts, whatever, what have you, or... Uh, uh, over sexualized fetishes in particular or um, being uh, mockers verse 2 but his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law doeth he meditate speaking of the most high's law meditate day and night all right so he so a righteous man is gonna meditate on the law of the commandments and purge out their mind of all the filth and wickedness that's going on in this world and tune this world out. Verse 3, and he shall be like a tree planted in verse 3, and he shall be like a planted tree, or it's like he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he shall he, whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. So that man's gonna reap good fruits and he's going which is good works, and he's gonna prosper in his ways man and and because dealing with us we're going to prosper in staying in this truth and doing what the lord requires us to do which is keep his law sets and commandments and living the life and culture of a hebrew is like which is which is contrary to being a lustful man or woman all right primarily dealing with the man but this applies to the woman as well with that said let's go ahead and get sirach 25 and 21 all right out of the apocrypha <clears throat> All right, because you know we, you know we have to mortify our members. We have to restrain ourselves spiritually. You know what I'm saying? And also too, there's nothing wrong with liking a woman, have her having looking good and whatnot. But that's not what we primarily desire a woman for. We desire a woman for, especially in these times that we're living in now. If they, if they, a decent woman, they have qualities of a good woman. You can deal with her on a personal level, you know what I'm saying? And this same woman, you know what I'm saying, in general, can um, hey, come into knowledge, you know what I'm saying, preferably a Israelite woman, you know what I'm saying, brothers should be focusing on Hebrew Israelite women, but there's no law against dealing with the Gentile women outside of the uh, Canaanite nations, all right? Because our forefathers never dealt with Canaanites, you know, lawfully, but we uh we do not you know what i'm saying we you know preferably it's like women have a come in this truth that'll obey you and do what you know do what she's supposed to do all right we just don't desire a woman just be just because we're not we want to have sex and that's another thing too 
you know what I'm saying? Brothers be like, oh, well, you know, I, I just want to get off. Well, it's like this, man. What, 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 okay, fuck. I mean, it's like, excuse my language. Forget you. Forget what you care about. Let's deal with what the Bible says. Let's deal with what God's word says. Who cares about what you need and what you want? How, what, what about what the Lord wants and what the Lord requires you, which is keeping his words? Hey, going into the book of Sirach and Proverbs and getting advice, man. In this truth, we can't, we, we don't really have much, much of an excuse. You know what I'm saying? Especially now in the information age 2018, we have to be more wise than what we were 10, 15, 15 hell, even five years ago. You know what I'm saying? Scriptures are here. There's no excuse. And our lives would be better for it, man. So I don't want to hear no excuses. So let's let's go ahead and get, <clears throat> you know, Sirach 25 and 21 because the scriptures are clear that we're not supposed to be desiring a woman just based off of her looks. Oh, I want to have sex with her because she got an ass, titty, and thighs. You know what I'm saying? Just preferably, that's how men think. It's not just about that. All right? Actually, I'm going to just read what the Lord says. I'm going to be quiet. This is Sirach chapter 25, verse 21. Stumble not at the beauty of a woman and desire not Salakia. Let me read that again. This is the book of Ecclesiasticus, Sirach, out of the Apocrypha, chapter 25, verse 21. Stumble not at the beauty of a woman. So stumble not at the beauty of a woman. Don't be dismayed or, or don't be... Don't be captivated by a woman's beauty. The scriptures say beauty is, uh, you know, a woman that's beautiful is a woman, you know, uh, <laughs> the beauty of a woman cheereth the, account the countenance of a man, but it also says, that's how you know the scriptures are balanced, um, that beauty is also vain, all right? Stumble not at the beauty of a woman, all right? And desire not, it's like it, and desire her not for pleasure. Desire her not for pleasure. So it's not just about her looking good and all that and wanting to just have sex with her. You know what I'm saying? That's not just, that's not what it's all about. It, that's a part of it. But we're reading in the scriptures, we're reading in the Bible that we can't, you know what I'm saying? We're reading in the scriptures that that's what, not what you're supposed to be desiring her for exclusively. You know what I'm saying? And you know, you, you have brothers be using terms like a thirsty nigga, right? You got a lot of thirsty niggas in Israel, man. You know what I'm saying? That don't, that will read this scripture and be like, oh, well, you know what? Look, man, we, I can't help. No, you know, you can help it. There's no excuse, man. The Bible's, the scriptures is clear. Okay. So, so with that said, let's go ahead and get, so let's go ahead and go into some other scriptures, man. <coughs> Let's go ahead and give 1 John 2 and 16. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to go into some scriptures, you know what I'm saying, to uh, help help further this uh, this topic and lesson. 1 John 2 and 15, <coughs> and it's and it reads, and you know, this is uh, lusting and, you know, and you know, a lot, like God brothers be wanting to do porn, you know, watch porn or read magazines with w naked women and all that. See, the thing is, with doing that, is that it draws in spirits on, on you, man. You know what I'm saying? In Greece, that that type of thing was actually going on in Greece. You know what I'm saying? It was very heavy in Greece and in Rome for these sexualized images. Only now is it even more amplified because of the times that we're living in. We're living in the very last days of the last days, mind you. So this is all lust of the world and this is what the world loves right so if we're not a part of the world we're part of the heavenly father then we're not supposed to be loving the things of the world okay and porn and all that other madness and in and, and you know you know i'll just say it say it like it is beating off to a to a uh, magazine that has you know naked women in it I'm pretty sure uh, all them women that you see in the porn, porno videos or whatever videos, they're married. Most of them, if not all of them. All right. So 1 John 2 and 15, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, love, this, love the lust of the world, not just sexual lust, but all kinds of desires of the world. 
the love of the Father is not in him. All right? So the love of the world, is if you have the love of the world, the lusts and desires of this world, then the love of the Father is not in you. Man. You can say, and this, I, hey, I'm going to watch this video and apply this to myself as well because, <clears throat> you know what I'm saying, it's some, you got some guys that are out here that are Saturday, Saturday, Sunday, whatever day that they on Israelites, but they, they, they secretly, in their mind, love this world and everything in it. Okay? So, let's go ahead and get, yeah, let's go ahead and get Romans 7 and 7, you know what I'm saying? Let's go ahead and get Romans 7 and 7, okay? Romans 7 and 7. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin but by the law. For I, for I had not known lust except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. So the law, the law when you deal with the first 10 commandments of the 613 laws, it tells you about not coveting and coveting and desiring things to the point of doing anything and anything you know what I'm saying to, to uh to get them you know what I'm saying the law tells us that you know what I'm saying not to covet okay in the law that's why I go back to meditating on the law it will alleviate you from these sins or or uh, put up a hedge of protection against you from these different spirits and temptations of the flesh and of Satan you know what I'm saying so let's go ahead and get First John 31. Okay. So first John first I mean Job chapter 31 verse 1 I have made a covenant with with my eyes why the, why then should I think upon a maid right why then should I think upon a maid right you know what I'm saying this is and this is going back to the whole thing of lusting all right so let's go ahead and go back go to uh the 10th verse I mean let's let's skip down to the 10th verse real quick you know what I'm saying because us lusting, you know what I'm saying, you know, why, like, and this is a, you know, this is an example of Job. He's saying, why, why, like he says, I made a covenant with my eyes. Why then should I make a, uh, think upon a maid? You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to skip down to verse 10. And it reads, no, I'm going to read verse 9. If my heart had been deceived by a woman, or if I had laid wait at my neighbor's door, then let my wife grind unto another and let others bow down upon her all right so you know you know dealing with a lot of these women nowadays you know what i'm saying and this is an example of job in his time you know what i'm saying if a woman is what she is man let you know what i'm saying and she's a whore you know what i'm saying because we're not supposed to leave a woman you know what i'm saying we're not supposed to leave a woman for nothing you know you know what I'm saying outside of adultery but if a, if a woman is a lustful woman and she's wicked then you have then you can let her go you know what I'm saying then move on to the next now a lot of brothers make the mistake of um, oh I'm gonna just go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and just you know dump her off and leave her you know what I'm saying but you know what I'm saying you can't you just don't go through it that way you know what I'm saying you gotta be you know you gotta be wise man so So I'm going to go to 1 Peter real quick, then, uh, the second chapter, 1 Peter, the second chapter,
Okay, First Peter second chapter in the eleventh verse. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from uh, fleshly lusts, which war against the soul. So we got to abstain from fleshly lusts, all right, which war against the soul because fleshly lusts, you know what I'm saying, can go not only just in sexual lust, but also to lusting after riches and the things of this world, you know what I'm saying, and desiring them to the point of, committing sin you know what i'm saying the flesh is bound by you know what i'm saying of sin while the spirit is bound while the law is bound by the spirit let me read that again first peter 2 and 11 dearly beloved i beseech you as strangers and pilgrims abstain from fleshly lust which war against the soul okay it wars against the soul now you know what i'm saying the lust after the flesh or or, or to deal with things that are of the flesh or the lust of the flesh now all right so i'm gonna get through a lot of these scriptures real quick and um, you know what I'm saying I'm gonna get through a couple more and I'm and then I'm gonna close. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna get this in Romans the 13th chapter, the 13th verse. All right. Because <coughs> Salak, <coughs> Salak, you know we can't we got we can't allow these things to bound us, man. You know what I'm saying? We gotta have the strength and the spirit to fight off these different um these different uh spirits men that come upon these unclean spirits to make us wanna um desire to do things of the flesh, man. Which is in particular less than after the flesh, less than the, after women, clothes, money, worldliness, fleshly things, man. All in general. Alright, so Romans uh chapter thirteen, verse thirteen. <coughs> Salakia. Let us honestly, as in the day, not in riot, rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and uh, envying, verse 14, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, or Yahweh Shai Mashiach, put on the Lord Yahweh Shai, put on Adawan Yahweh Shai Mashiach, and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. So we're not supposed to make provision to fill, to fulfill the lust of the flesh, you know what I'm saying, and the, make provision of the flesh and the lust thereof, you know what I'm saying? We got to make provision for the spirit, man, because the Lord ain't going to save these wicked carnal bodies out of, out of this place. He's going to save the spirit out of this place, man. And you get beaten up on these on them chariots in what they call the UFOs, those chariots that the Lord is about to send to deliver his people, He's he, they're not... They're not delivering this carnal body, all right. This body's not gonna be in the, in in those ships, man. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? So we can't be making those, uh, you know, those provisions of the flesh. And I'm gonna just, you know, put, um, I'm gonna deal with all all variables. You know what I'm saying? You know, like you know, brothers want to, you know, buy videotapes and and uh, go on pornography webs websites and even though the word por pornea is in the bible dealing with fornication you know you still got some brothers that deal with pornography and you know they have those back you know they have those particular pages where you know i'm not saying i've been on no porno sites but they have pages where you can deal with women on men women on women then you have underage 11 10 12 13 14 year old girls man you know what I'm saying? Then there's other things. You know what I'm saying? There's all things. That's why the scriptures say abstain from all appearance of evil, man. You know what I'm saying? That's why you don't make provision of the flesh because you're susceptible and you're open up to those spirits or those lustful spirits to jump on you. Oh, I'm going to look at a woman and a man fucking, which I don't know why you would. It's locky for my language again. But, you know, screwing each other. Okay. Then... You know, whatever lust that's in that in your mind to like that, you know what I'm saying, or whatever, what you know what I'm saying, then you're gonna start liking oh women on women. That's gonna appeal to you. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it, a sin begins with one thought, and it, and just like a play, it spreads, man. That's why you don't make provisions like that. That's why, man, it would be it would behoove brothers to whatever videos, whatever magazines that make you lust after the flesh you know what i'm saying 
instead of going out going out getting a woman you know what I'm saying in particular or, or you know what I'm saying if a brother has that particular problem remove it and, and remove it out your life take it out throw it in the garbage burn it up you know what I'm saying because it's bounding your spirit and your flesh into this carn carnal world man <coughs> in particular lusting after the flesh you know what I'm saying it's dealing with that also too dealing with cars money what have you you know what I'm saying that that men and women of the flesh of the world lust after man so don't make like it says I'm gonna read this again and I'm, I'm gonna close on this Romans 13 and uh, 14 but put ye on the Lord Yahweh Adawan Yahweh Shah Mashiach and make no provision, all right, prearrangements for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof, all right. So we're not supposed to be making provisions to fulfill the lust to, to fulfill the lust thereof in the flesh, man. Okay, so you know, I think that's it. That's all, all I have. You know, saying dealing with this topic. You know, hopefully brothers and sisters were edified by this topic, and hopefully brothers and sisters take heed to this because it's a serious thing dealing with men and men and women you know individually in particular privately secretly you know what I'm saying but it has to be addressed uh, you know for a man of, a man of the Lord my, like myself to address this thing so with that said I want to pr give all praises glory and honor unto Yahweh Bashim El Shai much love to the brothers and sisters in this truth and the priest prophets elders pushing the truth out sincerely that said this is right I be God Shalom